This is when you know you're in a peculiar situation. I, I am. I am in a peculiar situation, Russell. Part of my job these days is to watch your bullshit, lad. A lot of you ain't super fans of Chomsky, but I'll just at this... A lot of you ain't super fans of Chomsky. That's because a lot of his viewers are QAnons and right-wingers now. Point, cite him in a manner that, you know... I want to cite him in a manner... Hang on, hang on. I had it just here on my phone. Look, when I do that shit, I'm live. That's forgivable. You edited this. Don't hold your phone up at me. You edited out some bullshit about you not having a meet and grope earlier. And now, all right. One of his most famous quotes, and you guys might like it. The One of his most famous quotes, and you guys might like it. The smart way to keep people passive and obedient is to strictly limit the spectrum of acceptable opinion, but allow very lively debate within that spectrum, even encourage the more critical and dissident views. Yeah, no. I am uh, Critical and dissident does not include pro-genocide. Critical and dissident isn't pro-invasion of sovereign countries. That's not critical and dissident. As a matter of fact, it's kind of the opposite. It used to be that this Chomsky quote would have been more functional uh, being against things like the Iraq War, for example, which yours truly protested against, along with a lot of my friends, in a, in, in the, in, in a in the safety of a democracy, by the way. I wasn't jailed for it. And it had an impact, I like to think, over time. But very distinctly, we, we don't, we allow for a lot of discussion. As a matter of fact, this asshole and Chomsky could say all they want. Chomsky was just on Democracy Now! a, a couple of days ago. That gives people the sense that there's free thinking going on, while all the time the presuppositions of the system are being reinforced by the limits put on the range of the debate. Yeah, I mean, we all lose so much when we can't... Uh, uh, can I make a point? Yeah, go ahead, Charlie. Uh, what about we just kill everybody? What? I mean, it's just, it hasn't been discussed. Well, no. Oh, why are you censoring me? I'm not censoring you, you're a fucking lunatic. What do you mean kill everyone? Well, I'm not, okay, technically, I don't mean everyone. Well, who do you mean? Everyone but me. <laughs> why, why, why is that part of the conversation? Because it should be. Look, all possible points of debate should be available on equal par with everything else. Also, the Vietnamese need to go. What? <laughs> yeah. I mean, do you believe that? I don't know if I believe it, but I do believe it should be worth part of the discussion. Oh, uh, yeah. Not to mention the elitist assumption that you are unable to discern what information is good for you. How yeah, that's not... Uh... It's not the elitist assumption on any of these sites. Let me let me tell you a little something about how social media works. Uh, these are private companies that create server farms where you park your bullshit, and it's fun to park your bullshit there. But it's their company, and if it doesn't, if it isn't an enjoyable experience for you, you will leave and go to another place to park your your bullshit, your pictures of your lunch, your quirky phrases, your praise or or criticisms of a television show, all the normal stuff of social media when it's not, you know, war zone. And uh, all of those companies um, have to make a decision about what's acceptable conversation within the confines of the space they've created. Because um, I, I'm just saying, if you run JDate, and JDate has a community conversation area, if you go on there denying the Holocaust, uh, you're not going to have an account on JDate anymore. And that's not because you're being censored by big tech or the government. It's because you're on fucking JDate, you creep. And so uh, the same thing is true of YouTube and all these other things. They have a right to set a standard for what is available on their platform in any way. And if at some point they overreach and they deny certain conversations, people will leave and go elsewhere. So they're constantly in a balancing act of this. Meanwhile, uh, they can set whatever standard they want, and it does not affect your rights to believe or talk about any fucking thing. But in a lot of these cases, you can monetize these platforms and make a living off of them. And these folks, once you get into that area, which is where Russell is, where his RT was, where a lot of these conversations, where this woman with the Substack um, uh, argument is, 
is that eventually they're worried they won't be able to make money off of this bullshit of carrying Russia's water for them because that's their job. And again, none of this stuff is banned. These sites, if you go to these sites for information and, uh, and, and entertainment, which is what they're for, and you, you log in, these sites can't give you the illusion that all thought is created equal on their platform because it's reflective of what their platform is about. It's got a brand. It's got an idea. It's got a term of service to it. So Stormfront don't, doesn't have an account on YouTube or Twitter because if they did, then the user would go, YouTube, this site, or Twitter, this site, or Facebook thinks that the, the uh, a Black Lives Matter group or a, a dog charity or my mom's bowling group is on this, it, it has the same value as a Nazi propaganda site. You see? So the, the site's going to go, no, 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 no. We don't, we don't consider a Nazi propaganda site to be equal. Now, there's varying degrees of that. But when Russia goes, Russia was on, RT was on all these sites for a good long while. And some of the sites they've shut down themselves. But once they invaded a sovereign country, they get kicked into the Stormfront category really quick. Have you not seen enough from your leaders in recent years to know that they are not morally superior to you? Uh, and you are? Again, what is this argument? I don't, uh, first of all, I don't follow my government leaders as my moral compass, but also as far as affecting what I want them to do as far as policy, that's why I vote and try to build a groundswell of support around policies that I think should actually make it to law, as we all do in a democracy. And there's a lot of back and forth in this country because that's how democracies work. At, at, uh, and I'm sorry, person who lives in a country that is ruled by a magic family says what? I come from UK. We had our government part in their way through the whole coronavirus pandemic while people weren't allowed to leave their homes. So that's the reality of what we're dealing with. Is it? Some superior species. Uh, well, we can look at Russia today and we can see that that's wrong. Those idiots, though, they won't understand. They get all carried away and go all Russian by morn. And again, um, I don't know what the rules are. Like, UK has different rules than the United States has. But uh, as far as what can be on BBC, for example, or something like that, because it's literally a government funded site. So they make a decision about what they're going to carry and what they aren't going to carry and why they were carrying it in the first place is curious, probably just to make nice with Russia about this stuff and go, yeah, we're not at a war with you. Thanks for all the oligarch money in London. <clears throat> oh, if they see that, they'll be scoffing down stroganoff by 9 a.m. And it's not even a breakfast dish. Artie's audience. Makes up about 0.04% of TV viewing in the UK, okay. Makes up about 0.04% of TV viewing in the UK. Oh no, this phenomena. It's the new Squid Game, Russia Today. No one's interested in it. It's nothing to worry about. It's establishing a precedent. Oh yeah, shut it down, shut it down. It's too confusing. This is the ex- And again, I, like he doesn't state in this particular situation whether the, uh, the British government shut down uh, RT itself. And it certainly does not apply in the United States. But the conflation of the two is the dick move. The idea that somehow if the UK, which has much more stringent rules and does not have absolute freedom of speech like we do in the United States, um, somehow their rules and our rules are the same. ...of control is de facto elitism. It's de fa and yes, he's comparing uh, pandemic rules about a contagious disease to Putin's rules. So aristocracy, you can't decide. You don't know what's good for you, you poor things. Just sit down, watch the television. And by the way, you absolutely can. And I'll show you in just a second. I Every time I think I'm going to show you guys why he's insane and lying his ass off, he keeps digging. Shut up, we'll do the thinking. Oh, they're eating a stroganoff. This isn't about RT. It's about the agenda to continually expand and normalize the censorship of unauthorized speech. Norm N no, it's about RT. It's about what RT did and what Russia did that put them in the category, for example, of North Korea. Because of a violent attack on a sovereign country. They lost their place at the table 
their place at the table was not taken away. It. We just accept that that's what you do. You carry a passport. You do as you're told. You don't. Yeah, you carry a passport. You got citizenship. You're British. You enjoy the National Health Service. Why shouldn't you just be able to use the National Health Service if you're Polish and you come over here? Well, we don't want that, do we, Russell? What's that kind of media? Is that the world you want to live in? Well, if it isn't, stay very, very present because you're being walked into it. That's what it was about. Yes, you're being walked into it. What? Well, I mean, how are we ever going to survive if, if Stormfront doesn't get their channel back? And they were pretending it was about the need to fight COVID misinformation before that. And when they were pretending it was about the need to fight US extremism before that. They were pretending. Again, this is a premise that he's putting forward or that the writers put that Caitlin Johnston is putting out. That they are pretending that they were just they weren't really trying to save people from COVID. They weren't really trying to deal with January 6th and, and the ratcheting up of violence, political violence in the United States. They weren't really dealing with that. That wasn't the issue. It was just uh, it, it was manipulation. Again, another premise put forward by this writer and parroted by this dickhead that has no basis other than their attitude towards government or their belief in their own paranoid bullshit. They were pretending it was about the need to defend election security before that, and when they were pretending it was about the need to fight Russian propaganda the first time before that one cycled back round again. Um, there was, you mean Soviet propaganda, which was an act, they have a propaganda ministry. So does China. I met with them when I had to do my show over there. It was ridiculous. I sat at a table across from the propaganda minister of China. They have a person whose job it is. Stop pretending it doesn't exist. Flares. The virulent post 9-11 like hysteria about Russia that has been promoted by one-sided mass media reporting on the war. Yeah, that's what it is, one-sided. Right? There's a side. Russia has a side in this. They, uh, don't you understand that James Baker uh, told uh, Gorbachev that once, if it just would t tear down a wall in Berlin, that they wouldn't expand one inch further into the east of Germany, even if Germany unifies and decides to be a whole country again, which is none of their fucking business. But it was verbal, so, you know. You got to take it seriously. And then, of course, you know, that meant it had to mean that he was promising they wouldn't do Poland. They wouldn't do any of the Baltic states. They wouldn't do Ukraine. They wouldn't move any further than Germany. Why? I don't know, because those countries didn't ex exist as free states at that point. Why would they even be talking about them? The five years of fact-free conspiracy mongering which preceded it has created an environment where you'll get shouted down on social media for voicing any opinion about this conflict apart from saying Putin invaded because he is evil and hates freedom. Uh, no, no, you can get shouted down for a lot of other reasons as well. I mean, this is, I, I don't, again, this is, this is a way of shaping conversation too. It's very, this happens a lot in, in argumentation where what you do is you create a protected class idea which is not singularly what you have to say. You don't have to say Putin is evil and he hates freedom. You can say, no, this is about a land grab. This is about uh, oil and gas. This is, um, you know, he's up against a demographic time clock that Trump was going to, I mean, there's a lot of other options in here besides him being evil and this, and he hates freedom. That's, I mean, he's not a fan, <laughs> but you don't have to make that argument or even bring it up. Um, but by creating the illusion that there is only one accepted conversation about this, which there is not, you you say that everything outside that is verboten and therefore it's a, it becomes exemplary of control when it that is flat out false. This is calling for diplomacy and de-escalation. Which is like everybody, but calling for diplomacy and de-escalation and surrender are two different fucking things. And saying, well, Russia's got a point, you know, you got to let them. I mean, basically, can you tell the difference between Russian and Ukrainian? They sound very much alike. Are being systematically drowned out. No, they aren't. It, they're literally ongoing. With all the nation states, they're constantly talking to Russia. They're trying to find a diplomatic way out of this. 
<laughs> what's being drowned out is anybody in Russia talking to Putin saying, dude, cut your losses and get the fuck out. Meanwhile, you've got massively influential pundits like Sean Hannity calling for a direct NATO airstrike on a Russian military convoy in Ukraine. Without so? Sorry, Russell, you can't use this clip. You'll never get on Sean Hannity. You're stuck on Tucker, just like Jimmy. The slightest risk of losing his immense platform for advocating a move that would probably lead to a very fast, very radioactive third world war. Yes, he's a lunatic. And, and guess what? By the way, uh, Americans, within the context of this, um, take our media with a grain of salt because we know he's not state run. See the difference? See the difference between Sean Hannity and his current job and somebody on RT? He's, he's clearly not in alignment with the government. The government is clearly not telling Sean Hannity what to say. That's, it, that's an example of how full of shit this article and Russell are right now. Right?